Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's meditation and activation. For those who are in person attending and those who are joining the next now moment, we are creating this field of soul kinship, connecting our soul families, monads, And as we are waiting for people to arrive, we are allowing to just drop back into the, the repose of the self. Hmm. Today I'd like to talk about the play of Maya. As you can tell, um, either from your own life or the people around you are experiencing a lot of turbulence. We can see that the illusion or Maya is ramping up. It's becoming faster and faster. And this speed with which the um, illusion itself is, is ramping up, it's becoming uh, almost impossible to keep up with it. I've noticed that during the day, there's absolutely newer and newer reasons why we are being pulled out of of our equilibrium, of our harmony. And just notice because it's the only way to swim these tides. Know that Maya as illusion starts enveloping the purity of the self as soon as the child is born. So the womb itself, interestingly, the mother's womb, is protecting the child, the, the, the developing embryo. And then once it is ensouled within the mother's womb, it's still protected from illusion or maya. And then as soon as the child is born, as soon as it actually comes into this world out of the mother's womb, it, it starts experiencing Maya. And that's part of the um, experience of the mother, Shakti. Yes. The mother has many faces. It has the face of Kali, the fierce mother. Actually, Kali is, is a beautiful representation of, of, of the mother, the feminine principle, because she is so gracious, but so fierce that she, in her sovereignty, is that principle in, in our um, multiverse that dissolves the untruth. And I would say that Mahakali, the great mother, is truly working her way through in our world, in our lives, in our individual and collective um, in order for, for humanity to ascend. Because there's all, already a decision 
that have been made by humanity, it's 51%. The souls have agreed to be this, a service to other. When a civilization agrees to be a service to other, it means that we are ready, we are mature enough to transcend. We're mature enough to ascend through the stages that are actually merging our our consciousness into into our divine knowing of who we truly are and for that to happen kali needs to dissolve everything that is standing in the way every layer of maya just imagine since you've been born there's a layering on layering of maya, illusion, on your hologram. Hologram, you can imagine as, as this multifaceted vibratory field, which you might call your body. And the body is not just present in this realm. It's, well, the physical body is, but the extensions, the energetic extensions of this physic physical body are in all the densities. I'm not calling them dimensions because it's a, it's a different universe. Densities are a different saturations of light. And so this layering, we know even from psychotherapy, we know from our own experience that the layering is actually um, brought about through conditioning, first of all, in the home, and then through schooling, through society, through the societal collective norms, also through the collective unconscious. And there are other elements of your layering that you brought in through your other lifetimes, which are actually running subsequently. Yes, there's no past as such because there's no time. So all of your live all of the lives you've actually experienced are running subsequently and the layering and the deepening in the illusion is then forming the hologram the way you're experiencing it and this is why we do a lot of chakra work we work on, on two levels. We work on an energetic level and then we work also on the consciousness level. And obviously in the deepest teachings, you can separate Shiva from Shakti or Shakti from Shiva. There are some characteristics to, to the polarities, but you cannot essentially separate consciousness from energy. And this ramping up, all you can be is the observer of this ramping up of illusion. It's almost like when you have a very dusty carpet and the carpet has been neglected and finally you go and you go outside and, and take care of it. All the dust rises in the air as you try to beat the dust out of the carpet. And that's actually what's happening energetically to us. And the more we are identified with the specks of dust, it could be any type of, any type of turbulence the 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 slower all of this is going to be work through your experience and so there's a very basic teaching in all the traditions 
especially the Zen, Zen Buddhist tradition, but in the Vedas, it's present also in in the Christ, mystical Christianity, in uh, Sufism, is, is the need to honor and allow everything to be exactly as it is. And now I am going to throw this tenet out. And then we go into an Atma Vikara, which is an inward gaze to see how is this an experiential knowing. Atma Vikara, which is a, a term by Ramana Maharshi, teacher of non-duality. Atma Vikara, Vichara, which is also a self-inquiry, inquiring into the experience, the nature of the self. And the self is your only truth. Now, as I talked about the layering of your experience, The layering of the experience is not allowing us to know and to directly experience the only reality. Because the reality is obfuscated, just like a dirty window is obfuscating your clear vision. Now, it's tricky because we think that we see clearly. That's why it's very tricky. So the tenet is for today. If we allow all the energies, thoughts, feelings, sensations, experiences, to be exactly as they occur, then reality itself starts rearranging that which is supposed to be occurring. Now from, from this contention, we can derive that this whole process of ascension is essentially, if you're a driver, I'm not, but it's essentially if you have been living in an illusion that you're driving your own car and call that your life. And yes, you have this control over the car, you enter and exit the car, you use the brakes, the steering wheel, the gas pedal, all of that you're using. Yes, it's just like you're using your body, you think it's real. But in today's self-inquiry, <laughs> I will propose just for the time being, as a, as a practice to sit in the back seat. And then there's this funny concept of the ego where, okay, it says, okay, I'll sit in the back seat, but then it still holds on to the steering wheel. It still is trying to impose some kind of a, a control over this chaos by just holding on to the steering wheel. So let's also inquire, and it's usually happening through our energetic involvement, through the senses. Yeah, how do the senses are constantly veering out? And then we're turning them back in and then go into this inquiry and the inquiry of once you allow reality to unfold, exactly as it is, without any need to do something, 
change something, then reality itself starts to starts to rearrange itself. And this is this is very essential. That that's the basis of of your um, approach to reality. It's um, notice that it's a very much in stark opposition of what we are taught in the West, because we are we are very mind oriented. We are thought that we can just make everything happen. It is an instant gratificatory culture where I want something, I get it. Yeah. So what we are looking again at today is that when we allow all the energies, sensations, fears, thoughts to be in the field exactly as as they're coming through then the field the light the awareness and presence of yourself automatically rearranges the hologram yeah rearranges the hologram Okay. Okay. I just raised my hand, but it's okay. So let's go into the process. We're, uh, we're entering a process called a solar logos. When we have ancient traditions venerating the sun, they're not venerating the physical sun. They're not praying to the sun. The solar logos is that inner sun of the self. The self is the one consciousness. You can call it God, the self, or mother, father, God, but there's also Mother, Father, God could be still a manifest aspect of divinity, but the self itself with a capital S for Ramana is the ultimate reality, ultimate consciousness, which is ever luminescent, which is also the lightless light. And notice, notice now. It is that lightless light that allows everything to come into being. So it is that light that lights up your so-called experience. If I say this, automatically you're being drawn back. Automatically you become the screen onto which the movie is being projected. Yeah, that's very important. So let's go into the process. We are already doing the process because there's nowhere to go, not, nothing to achieve. But step by step through Atma Vikara, Vichara, we're going into self-inquiry. And self-inquiry can also be only applied at a certain stage of evolution. It cannot be the first step, but we are not beginners. So let's do, let's do it. So we connect to our higher self and start winding down. We ask to connect to the Guru Tattva the Guru Tattva is the inner guidance of your soul. That is the Guru Tattva, which is connected to a solar logos.
Logos is wisdom. We connect deeper to the higher self and embody it. And just allow to see that if you are feeling your body, just feel your body everywhere from the head to the toes. If you're feeling your body, can you be the body? If you can observe any emotion, feeling, sensation, thought, if you can observe it, are you then one with that? Pull your attention and focus into your spine. as we connect to the I am presence. This phase of connection is one with non-duality where we collapsed our experiential field into the zero point, meaning we collapse the feminine and masculine polarity and arrived at this divine neutrality. Know that the self itself is closer, closer than your breath. Why? Because you can still observe your breath. It's closer than your jugular. Your true nature is so obvious. It's so present. It's so all pervading. That the ego construct misses it moment to moment. So today's Sankalp is to deepen into this immediate knowing of our true nature, of our birthright. There's one, only one aspect of your reality that begs you for realization and that is to realize who you truly are it's not begging you to buy a new shoe wash your hair those are secondary aspects but moment to moment you are being asked this divinity inside of you is asking you is imploring moment to moment that you align with the truth of who you truly are so that the truth of who you truly are can harmonize the chaos, harmonize the discord. We connect to Mother, Father, God. And we ask that in this co-joined field, only the highest truth, love, wisdom, and the will of one can come true 
in a form of healing. Timeline jump. Remembrance. Transmission of the purity of the self. You can thus connect to your guides, angelic medical teams. We have so many other dimensional teachers teaching us, the ones that serve the light, that guide us so that we can find our way through this thick layer of mist. Because notice the soul is ubiquitous, it is everywhere, it is claircognizant, clairvoyant, all the clairs, clairauditory, clairsentient. But when the soul is experiencing itself through the limitation of the body, and when we close our eyes, as much as we experientially can tell, so we don't see anything else but darkness. And in this darkness, we start unwinding. We close our eyes. And I'm going to ask you now, this is a soul teaching, soul vastu. It's a very unusual practice. Drop into the spine. at the level of your second chakra, which is the genitals. The womb or the hara for men. And just pull yourself back to the level of the spine. So we're not at the front body, but back. And now from this position, whether your mother is alive or dead, know that even if your mother's dead, she leaves part of her energy in this realm to support you. This is how the Divine Mother functions through bodies. This is a beautiful soul vastu, a teaching. So whether you are a male or female, you have a womb chakra. And at this place, just connect your consciousness with your own mother, just your physical mother, whether she's alive, or not. This is one point of your creation. That energy is the same creational force that birthed the universes, 
the multiverse. But for your own soul evolution, it is very, very healing to re-enter that womb space, the connection to your mother. Whether you have negative feelings about it or positive feelings about it, it only needs to be observed. And we are not evoking the personality of your mother. We're just evoking the mother concept, the archetype. Moving into the stillness. And as soon as you connect to the mother, you feel your soul is pulling. I ask the soul to descend deeper and deeper into this body. And notice that your soul is now pulling cosmic energy, cosmic solar energy. You feel like your entire body is a bit vacuumed. It's entering through a vacuum. It's almost the body is jagged a bit backwards as if you are being pulled, the soul is now pulling, 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 pulling cosmic energy. This is the cosmic energy of the mother. Just feel how blessed this feels. We're filling. the womb chakra, the holy womb chakra. It is connected dynamically to your soul. And we're filling the soul with cosmic radiance. And once you're harmonizing, filling the soul with cosmic radiance, you're also rearranging, harmonizing the experiences of your life, the so-called life. Because notice that the soul is nothing else but a sacred geometry hologram that is projecting a movie, which is called your life. And as soon as you go to the root, go to the projector, You harmonize the chaos. You zero point all of these restless experiences. When the soul is not in alignment with, with itself, when the five elements And when our <coughs> senses, the karm indriyas, are constantly tapping into this neurotic, unsettled, it's 
superficial layer of reality. We are blinded to the reality of who we truly are. Feel that at the level of the hara or womb at the back, something is pulling you backwards. This is that etheric level of the sacred womb chakra which is directly connected to your soul. It's directly connected to your karma. It's directly connected to your manifestation abilities. It is from this space that you are manifesting. So allow this space to clear. We are filling our hologram, multi-density hologram with cosmic light. It is a very, very high vibrational transmitting activating light. And all you can feel is this grace. The mother's womb, connect one more time, your consciousness to your physical mother. It is your origin. And this origin is leading back to the origin of origins. This is your soul vastu, soul teaching. And as we're connecting to the cosmic mother, know that we are the nuanciation, the phenomenon, the nothing coming into the something, being. So just notice that you are actually being nurtured as your soul is actually sucking. I am giving this analogy of a suckling child. Your soul is sucking this cosmic effulgence, cosmic light, filling all of your layers with iridescent crystalline golden white light. And it's penetrating all of the layers. You might feel a little bit of a lower back pain. It's a very intense connection to the origin of origins, the mother's womb, the origin of origins. This is what we call alpha and omega, alpha 
which is you in this now moment, an omega, the origin. This is also called the Purusha, the unmanifest, latent form of the feminine polarity, the zero point the mother of all potentiality. Just feel that every single cell is being harmonized in the body. This is a very deep quantum healing. Very, very deep because it affects the origin of origins. As there is nowhere to go, nothing to achieve, Because the next moment, the next now moment is taking care of itself from the harmony, the ever pulsing, becoming of life. This is called Atma Vikara, Vichara, self inquiry. Be conscious how your soul is pulling, suckling on the cosmic ambrosia. Your soul is clearly, essentially connected, nourished, graced by this cosmic ambrosia like the mother's milk filling your body vitalizing revitalizing all of the cells Notice that all of the selves become self-aware. They have a third eye in them as if every single cell becomes an eye, a seeing, knowing, multi-directional. Computational device. And we are now affecting the energy body, the pranamaya kosh, 
cosmic solar logos, the light. is revitalizing the physical layer of your hologram, the, sorry, the energetic layer, the energetic layer, the prana. As your breath becomes deep, harmonized, Prana and apana becomes harmonious. You're adjusting your soul to become a cosmic vessel, a cosmic transcendent vessel of divinity. Prana apana, harmonized. And we now go into the mental and emotional body. Suckling from the Amrit Ambrosia of conscious cosmic light. We're illuminating the mental and emotional body, removing any and all blocks holes, densities. You're zero pointing and in all turbulence. This is called Ekagra. One pointedness we become the place of origin if you need to connect forge this connection through connecting to the energy of your mother Know that your soul is directly connected. It speaks to you through your emotions, sensations, feelings. And now we're affecting the wisdom body layer. The wisdom body at the level of the third eye. Connecting to the Guru Tattva. Connecting to your own inner teacher. Allow at the back side of your body, the level of your second chakra, connect and be filled with this cosmic light. And I ask the soul to further descend, further descend into this body avatar. At 
at this level, the wisdom body, we connect to the Akash. the divine library. The divine database. We are the divine database. And finally, we connect to the bliss body, suckling the ambrosia, the amrita, through our soul, filling the bliss body with the most purified, high frequency of mother, father, God's light. Sat Chit Ananda. Wisdom, consciousness, and bliss is the soul's nature. We are now rebalancing all of the densities. I'm asking the soul as it is existing throughout 12 densities to harmonize as above, so below. Just feel that you are this magnificent technology that is always connected to the cosmic mother and is always supported always revitalized. Always graced by the highest cosmic intelligence, love, wisdom, joy, abundance. Abundance is being downloaded into yourselves as a frequency. Abundance is nothing else but the but the cessation of lack. When we feel whole. Pull more of this cosmic light into the soul. Connect to your mother. Connect to the cosmic mother. As the soul is being revitalized. Uh, 
It's a very strong transmission. In this space, I ask for the dissolution of karmic blocks. You can contend that I revoke any and all contracts, soul contracts, with any and all person, thing, being, visible or invisible from any dimension, timeline, lifetime, parallel timeline. I revoke, annul, and delete all contracts as I now return to my fullness and unity, self-same, knowing, being of the self. So it is. We're healing ancestral karma. Connect to your mother. Connect to the divine cosmic mother. As we are suckling the amrit, the ambrosia of cosmic light. Allow yourself to imbibe this cosmic effulgence from the backside at the level of the womb or hara. Just stay, stay still. Om. Clean, clean, clean. Raksha, raksha, raksha. Om Vishva Kshira Maha Kshira Clean, clean, clean. Raksha, raksha, raksha. Om Vishva Kshira Maha Kshira Clean, clean, clean. Raksha, raksha, raksha. Allow to regenerate every single cell of your body. We are now stopping the entropy. I ask to stop all processes of entropy. You can feel now that the soul had filled up with cosmic crystalline golden light and just feel that your body's aura is as bright as the sun. And you can shine now into your house, 
into your houses, to the people, and the houses can emit this light. Three hundred and sixty degrees in radius into the neighboring areas, sending out the light of ascension, allowing all of the humans to be based in the soul light, soul vastu, the teaching of the soul. Soul, the Atma that had merged with the Paramatma. And you can be the valvisher of this planet, every single human being, and pray that we all as a humanity realize the self realize who we truly are and that is the service to other and we pray that any and all programs that still blind us to follow the service to self, the egoic mind, be transmuted by the light of the soul. Know that as a conscious creator, you will notice that as a conscious creator, you can speak things into being. But you need to first transmute fear. And fear, if it occurs in your life, is just a test. It's testing you whether you choose love, the truth of yourself, or do you choose fear? And conscious creatorship truly works for the highest good of all when you create for the good of all. And this is the new earth paradigm. Know that we are entering the Sat Yuga. Tomorrow is the 15th of January, a pivotal, pivotal day where this change over takes place from the Kali Yuga into the Sat Yuga, a time of the golden age. where we can only exist, do, say, be, align with that which is for the highest good of all.
so it is.